let's start again uh, with uh, this afternoon's uh, session. So the first one will be about research landscapes in Europe, part two. So yesterday you had a presentation for Germany, Norway, and Czech Republic. And today uh, it will be about uh, Great Britain and Belgium. So Stephanie, it's yours. So thank you very, very much for this kind of introduction. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephanie De Santos uh, from the Higher Education Research and Innovation Department of the uh, French Embassy in the UK. So, um, what are the main uh, features of the research landscape in the UK? What are the uh, mobility opportunities, especially in the context of uh, Brexit? So. As you know, the UK is uh, renowned for the excellence of its higher education and research. Um, UK universities are uh, at the top of world rankings. So there is the Golden Triangle, as it's called, uh, with Oxford University, Cambridge, and uh, London's universities such as uh, UCL, King's College, uh, Imperial, and um, the London School of Economics. And also, in terms of ranking, the UK is the second country in the world having received more um, Nobel Prizes for science. And it's the most successful country for receiving uh, ERC advanced grants. And also, the top four uh, universities receiving the most funding from uh, Horizon 2020 are British. Um, in the UK, there are also influential scientific institutions, for example, the National Academies, uh, the Royal Society, British Academies, and others. Uh, I think there will be an, an, a presentation by the Royal Society after, after that. And um, so uh, there is the, the um, education and research are excellent, despite low public spending, because research and development expenditure um, account for only 1.7% of GDP in the UK, as against 2.2% in France or 2.8% in Germany. Um, but on the other hand, as you know, uh, there are expensive tuition fees, uh, around uh, 10,000 pounds a year, uh, often. So. Some key figures to highlight this um, uh, excellence of UK research, edu higher education and research. The UK represents 1% of the world population for 3% of global funding for research, 6% of peer-reviewed papers, 12% of citations, and 16% of the world's most highly cited articles. The UK research funding system is divided between um, the centralized part, which is led by the Department for Business, Energy, and Industrial Strategy, and the Devolved Administration, which are the Scottish, Welsh, and Northern Ireland Funding Councils. Uh, there is a dual system for research funding, so uh, funding of projects, which are provided by the seven research councils, and recurrent funding based on uh, quality assessment of the research. For uh, supporting the private sector, it's Innovate UK, which is the, the innovation agency. And um, it's, it's a my driving uh, growth and supporting business in uh, realizing the um, technological achievements. And there will be changes um, in because in uh, April 2018, the three bodies, Innovate UK, the Seven Research Council, and the HEFCE will be merged in one body, which will be the UKRI. If you are interested in doing your PhD in the UK, uh, you can uh, have a look to the uh, funding, s funding sources of the research councils and the university, obviously, but also some fundings are provided by uh, commercial and charitable organizations. For example, in life sciences, there is the Wellcome Trust and Cancer Research, U Cancer Research UK. 
in social sciences and humanities um, of the British Academy can also provide some uh, fundings. And there are also opportunities for self-funding through professional and career development loans. To better understand the ac academic rank titles, um, so students uh, are undergraduates, then postgraduates, and then PhD students. This is quite similar to uh, uh, the American system. But uh, after having completed your PhD, it's quite little different because uh, it's called so lecturer, reader, and then professor. This is only a rough comparison to help you understand um, the, the academic system. There are several uh, bilateral mobility programs. So um, there is uh, the Maison Française Oxford Fellowship. So the uh, grant for PhD students from France wishing to carry out research at the Maison Française Oxford, which is a, a research center in social sciences and humanities. For uh, senior researchers uh, working in France and wishing to conduct a research in Churchill College, they can also have uh, some fellowship. And um, you may heard about it today because, uh, as you know, it's the two-year anniversary of um, the Paris Agreement on Climate Changes. There is also uh, the Make Our Planet Great Again program for uh, to support junior and senior researchers working in areas of climate changes, energy, and earth systems, and that would like to develop a research project and partnership in France. Uh, for um, uh, postgraduate students and PhD students, there is the Entente Cordiale Scholarship for one year study in the UK or in France. And after, um, well, for Erasmus Plus, uh, the UK participation uh, is uncertain after March 2019 because of the Brexit. And just for your information, there is no uh, partenariat uber uh, with the UK. So the UK is one of the few countries in Europe of not having this uh, partnership with France. What will be the impact of Brexit on higher education, research, and innovation? Um, so uh, Universities UK, which is an organization that uh, represents um, UK universities, have published some Brexit facts, and they underline some uncertainties, such as what will be the immigration status of EU students and academics, Will UK continue to participate in Erasmus Plus? Will UK also have access to EU funding for research and innovation, um, especially Horizon 2020? And will there be an increase in tuition fees for EU students studying in UK universities? To underline the importance of foreign students and academics uh, in UK universities, um, so foreigners, they account for 50% of postgraduate research students and 28% of academic staff. Um, so also the UK is the first country of destination for um, EU 27 students. These figures are for uh, the importance of uh, researchers, foreign researchers in the UK. So uh, you can see that the UK is the most successful country for consolidator ERC grants, um, ahead of Germany, France, and the Netherlands. But if you have a closer look to where the grant is, you can see that it's the red and orange part. Almost 50% of the grantees are uh, foreigners staying in the, countries, in the country. What are the key technologies uh, identified by the government? So in 2013, uh, there were uh, what is called eight, the eight great technologies, which were uh, big data, satellite, robotics, synthetic biology, medicine, agri-science, energy, and nanotechnologies. And now in 2017, uh, in the industrial strategy, there are the four grand challenges, which are the uh, research on artificial intelligence and tech related to clean growth, aging society, and future of mobility. So, 
So um, these are all the activities that we do in all my department. So it's the higher education, research and innovation department of the embassy. We uh, foster bilateral co uh, collaboration in these areas. Um, we organize many events. For example, if you are in London on the 25th of January, there will be uh, the Night of Ideas with um, many artists, intellectuals, and for example, the, there will be uh, one a session on um, spa about space with uh, French and British astronauts at the French Institute, and one other uh, session about artificial intelligence and creativity at Imperial College with demonstration of technology. So you are very welcome if you are in London in this uh, in January. We also have um, a scheme for uh, supporting emerging research project between France and the UK. It's called the Seed Meeting Scheme. And it's provided a, a two-day um, financial support for a two-day uh, meeting in London for uh, uh, elaborating the research project. And also, we, we published some in-depth reports of research activity in the UK. So the last two reports were about autonomous cars and big data. You can find all this information on our website, so about the mobility programs, the funding support for research, the public events. And uh, so thank you very much for listening. Don't hesitate to stay in touch or to ask if you have any question. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pierre de Moitier, and I'm working for the Service Public de Wallonie. Uh, it's the Ministry of Research in the Walloon region in uh, Belgium. And um, first of all, I would like to thank Berenice for uh, her kind uh, invitation. Um, <coughs> this exercise is quite complicated because of the structure of my country. But um, let's go. Um, as you know, Belgium is not so far away from here. Uh, it's a country with um, worldwide known uh, painters uh, like um, uh, René Magritte, for instance, or um, <coughs> Paul Delvaux. Uh, we have also famous uh, mu mu musicians or singers. Uh, uh, a recent uh, example is uh, Johnny Hallyday. Um, we have traditions, for instance, Carnivals, we have the famous Gilles de Binche. We also have uh, horseback uh, shrimp uh, fishers in the North Sea. Uh, and we are also known for our gastronomy and beers. Um, but, and uh, we have also uh, actors, uh, for instance, um, Benoit Poulvord. But we have scientists, and uh, our last uh, Nobel Prize is uh, François Angler from the Université Libre de Bruxelles. Um, that was two years ago. And in my country, like in France, it rains sometimes, and uh, the sun also uh, shines. But uh, with our 11 million inhabitants, uh, mostly of them are speaking Dutch, 6.5 uh, million uh, French, 4.5 million and a little German-speaking community. Uh, Belgium hosts, uh, as you know, the European Commission, the European Parliament, a lot of uh, international organizations, NGOs, and more than 1,000 lobby groups. Uh, as I told you just uh, in the beginning, uh, Belgium is a federal state. That's the row A, um, with uh, communities and regions. The row B uh, are the communities. The f B1, let's say B1, is the French-speaking community, where you speak French. B2 is the Flemish-speaking community, and BC is the German-speaking community. And on the row C, you can see the regions and regions. The first one is the Brussels region, the second one is the Walloon region, and the uh, third one is, the f is Flanders. Is it okay for everybody? Let's continue. 
Um, so if you want, for instance, explore the moon like Dom Donald Trump uh, want to do uh, in, the, in, 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 in the next day, uh, if you want to make a research on board or a uh, Belgica vessel or want to go to Antarctica to uh, our um, polar station, you have to deal with the colleague of the federal level, uh, row A. But if you want, and about the federal level, uh, uh, there are 15 federal scientific institutes. Uh, topics, uh, research topics for this, th those institutes are, for instance, aeronautics and space, uh, polar or sustainable development, earth observation. Uh, the federal level uh, pays also um, the fees for the European Space Agency, for the European Southern Observatory in uh, Chile, uh, for UNESCO, for OECD, and so and so. Um, uh, next January, in a few days, we will have our own space agency. Um, it, it's, it will be a great step for us because we, 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 we now are working with the European Space Agency. No, we, it will be a Belgian one uh, space agency. But if you want to work uh, on an industrial uh, level or, uh, in, or perform your research in a higher education, you have to deal with regions and communities. Uh, it's quite complicated, but I have here a small video And it should work, maybe, maybe not. Okay. So, let's speak about the regional Walloon regional R and D landscape. Um, we have six universities uh, that gather. Uh, about uh, 85,000 students, 12,000 are coming from Europe, a little bit less than 6,000 are non-European students, and we have 4,200 researchers. The like, academic landscape is very, it's not very original, it's traditional. We have a, a funding body called FNRS, Fonds National de la Recherche Scientifique, six universities. The first one is UCL, Université Catholique de Louvain, then ULB, Université Libre de Bruxelles, Université de Liège, Université de Namur, Université de Mons, and Université Saint-Louis in Brussels. We have three academic hospitals, Uni Hôpital Saint-Luc, Hôpital Erasme et CHU de Liège, and we have a lot of spin-offs, research centers belonging to uh, universities. You, have, you will find more information about the academic landscape on the website studyinbelgium.be. We have 16 delegations worldwide. Most of them are in Europe, but in, in Paris, uh, just in front of the Centre Beaubourg, Pompidou, uh, also in the US, in Chile, in, so in Africa, and so and so in China. And we have uh, a network of six scientific officers um, the European one are in Sweden, Munich, and Lausanne. The other are in, uh, the, in the US, in Canada, and in Sao Paulo, Brazil. 
we have institutions out of our borders, for instance here, Fondation Birmans Lapotre in Paris, the same in Rome, Academia Belgica, L'Ecole Belge d'Athènes, and we have a mountain station in uh, Switzerland. We have a lot of national or multinational companies. They are active in uh, a lot of um, topics, agrofood, for instance, life science, transports, logistics, aeronautics, space, engineering, new materials, and so and so. All of them are employing more than 5.5 um, 5,000.5 uh, researchers. You will b find more information on the website uh, entreprisedewalloni.be. We also have 20 public research centers also involved in those topics, and those research centers are, in, are supporting SMEs and universities. Um, Accord.wallonie.be uh, uh, for more information. And f at least to have 13 competitive clusters supporting more than 200 sorry R&D um, uh, um, act active uh, SMEs. My ministry is composed by two departments. The first is research program, and the second is technology development. Uh, a quick overview of um, my, my my department. Um, it's in French, but no problem, I guess. We have two bilateral agreements, one with France, one with Brazil. Deja. Uh, <laughs> one with Brazil. We, um, are, we have uh, more than 150 uh, uh, agreements with uh, SMEs, universities, and, and research centers. We have, as I told you, six scientific uh, officers abroad. Uh, we have last year uh, nine. Uh, we have created nine spin-offs uh, from a research program, and so. So the research program where I, where I belong to is uh, divided into two regional programs. We have calls. Uh, the first one is quality development experimental, well enough first. That are programs, and the other part of the department is the federal and international international programs. We participate. Uh, to uh, the European research, uh, for instance, Eureka, Eurostars, some Zeranets, and so we also uh, manage a co-funded program like Interreg, and we are uh, in charge also of uh, comitology. Um, in uh, yellow, you will see all the countries we are dealing with um, in 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 all of our programs. Um, the second. Department is technology development department uh, with a direct support for new products. With uh, they, they are dealing with patents and hiring some people. Um, they also give money for uh, uh, for projects in in the frame of industrial development project or experimental uh, development project or prototyping. Uh, they are also in charge of uh, dissemination with a scientific magazine with contest contests with the sponsoring and so. Um, so, if you want more information, please have a look at our, our website. Do not hesitate to call me, to send me an email, and I will answer all your questions. Do you have some questions for our speakers? Okay, then I will ask one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it was the same question as I asked uh, to your colleagues from other countries. What makes your country um, attractive for researchers? For Great Britain, it may be a little bit uh, tricky as a question, but uh, maybe you can give us some advice or information on what makes the country attractive for researchers. So um, the, f the first part of the answer is easy, is that it's, as I said, the UK is well known for ec the excellence of its research and higher education, and that's why, I mean, um, students, uh, sometimes they, are, they agree to pay more for having a, a degree from a British university and also 
researchers are attracted by the fact that you have um, great installation for research, you have uh, higher salaries also, so, um, I, and also the language, I mean, you can, because it's uh, in English, so I think for all these reasons it's really attra attractive. Um, we also have salaries, we also speak French. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously, in, in the context now, um, it's uh, more complicated, and there are many uncertainties. Um, but still, it's a very attractive country. What makes Belgium attractive? Um, we don't have so high salary, but we have salaries. Um, we, we have a lot of... Um, our universities are, are well known. Uh, for instance, Université Catholique de Louvain is a well known uh, university, Université Libre de Bruxelles, Université de Liège, too. Uh, they are small, the, all of them are small universities, but um, very, it's, it's, let's say, it's a kind of, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great family, let's say. Ah, sorry. It's, let's say it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of great family. Uh, we have uh, research centers. Um, involved of a lot of topics. Uh, I spoke uh, during the, 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 the break uh, with uh, uh, Alejandro. Uh, we have uh, um, research centers uh, dedicated to uh, a lot of topics, for instance, water, um, um, new materials, and so and so. So it's, I think the landscape uh, is, 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 is interesting and um, with, yeah, it's, 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 it's nice. To be to be there, and um, so uh, English it's not so um, spread, but uh, you speak more s French. Um, but uh, no, it, I I think it's 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 it, it should be great for you. Um, just to also to highlight the difference in uh, the research landscape um, in the UK, most of the public research is done in the universities and not in research centers like in France, uh, Belgium, or Germany. So they benefit from the, the very, the very prestigious universities that are well known in the, in the world. Um, I don't know if uh, that's a question maybe for, for, for Pierre. I don't know if the program is still active, but beware. Um, do you have some incentives to um, encourage or to foster the intersectoral mobility of researchers? Same question for you, uh, Stephanie. No, the Beware program is now uh, over. Beware program was a, a mobility uh, program uh, for PhD uh, coming from all over the world to uh, SMEs, to universities, to um, uh, research centers in, in Wallonia. The program is now uh, finished. We had, uh, we have uh, hired more than 85 students coming from all over the world, from France, from 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 Brazil, from China, from from South Africa, and so and so. Um, you can have a look at uh, the website is bewarejobs.be. Um, so the program is now is now finished, but um, it it was a co-funded program with uh, Marie Curie action, uh, actions. Marie Curie, I don't know in English. Uh, action Marie Curie, uh, Marie Curie actions. Um, uh, but we intend to to um, to submit next year a new program of this kind, a uh, mobility mobility program. Um, but no, for now the program is now over. And uh, as I presented, we have several mobility programs also between France and the UK. So um, all the, in the information are online, and you can also ask me if you are more interested by one of. This program, so and maybe more specifically, intersectoral uh, mobility between academia and industry. Do you know some programs that can foster such uh, exchanges? Um, no, I'm not sure that. Uh, concerning mobility, just just a few words. Um, we have just for American uh, people, we have a, um, a fellow that called the fellowship is called uh, Fulbright. Um, still active, um, but just limited for, for American uh, American students. For the mobility, uh, uh, so university and industry, um, I think that in the UK they don't have the same kind of uh, 
says Steve, I think they don't, they don't have uh, something like this in the UK, but maybe I'm not right. You know, it's what I know. Excuse me. I would like to ask a question, one for both, for uh, the UK and Belgium, and one for Belgium. As for the Belgium universities, do you offer uh, the English scholarly academic programs, or all are inbuilt in French? Because we are French speaking. Yes. Um, like Fra France universities, they give options. Some years ago, all the courses were in French, but now. Um, for researchers, for yes, research. Uh, yeah. They can make it in English? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And is there, uh, like, this is a question for both. Is there, like, a platform or consortium for highly academic researchers for PhDs? Like, here in France, there is SUDUC. It's for researchers, the TES, and... Not in Belgium. There. No. In UK or Belgium. You, you, you have to have a look to the Euro, um, Access uh, website, as mentioned this morning. Uh, but it does not exist in Belgium oh. because it exists at the f European level, so it does not. It does, it's not necessary to to, to 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 make another one. Okay. And your access is, is more uh, efficient. Okay, same in the UK. Thank you so much. Another question, maybe. Okay, then if not, we are going to, to close this session. Thank you very much for coming and for presenting your research landscape in your own country. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie and Pierre. <laughs>